Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today I'm going to do something we haven't done for a while and that is a trains video. Yep, my cargo train hasn't had any new carriages for quite a long time uh, and well, as everyone will tell you, it's just simply not long enough. Where's the front of this thing? Ah, there. <laughs> So in order to make this train even longer and go around the sort of fourth side of my circular track, uh, it already pretty much covers three of them, uh, I thought I'd add a couple more carriages uh, and I'm doing two today just because they're similar to ones that are already on the train. Let's see if I can stop at the right point. Uh, there we go. Namely these two are train wagon with the cows in on the back uh, and this milk wagon which is my own creation. Uh, and I thought I'd do a variation on both of those two uh, just to use some very interesting pieces and to add to the overall length. So, let's get going. And the first of those interesting pieces that I want to use is this, the sheep from the set 60346, Barn and Farm Animals from 2022. Uh, and this is going to be a very simple replication of that uh, cow wagon transporter thing uh, from the set 60052 cargo train from 2014, uh, which is the blue one that I've sort of uh, converted into the hammerhead. Uh, and basically the idea is, is incredibly simple. Uh, repeat that uh, <laughs> cargo wagon, but take out the two cows that I kept in uh, the original and replace them with sheep. Yes, so this is what I've come up with. Uh, Basically, I can add this one in here. Uh, now, you can get these sheep on bricks and pieces, which is a very good idea, really, because uh, you only get one in that farmyard set. And I think it was another uh, uh, Disney set as well that had that sheep in. Uh, but you'll spend a lot of money to accumulate the number that I have here, for example. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight. Oh, oh. Oh, I nearly fell asleep there counting those sheep. <laughs> anyway, I've crammed in eight sheep, some bales of hay and another farmer, this time with a sort of hay uh, fork uh, into the same setup that is in the original instructions in there, uh, in that set 60052. So I don't really need to show you how I put it together uh, to make another wagon. Uh, and I like it very much because we've got those really interesting animals in there and they're all crammed in and it looks very authentic. I did experiment. Uh, we're doing a mock version which was them all crammed in and on two layers which I think is actually more realistic to real life ones but A it looked a bit cruel <laughs> and B it was so sort of densely bricked uh, that basically you couldn't really see the sheep very much uh, and given that they're the main feature of this thing I thought it was much better to have an open one so there is our first wagon a sheep wagon cool well what did I do for the second one well, for the second one, the star of the original milk wagon was the one by one brick uh, with that milk carton sort of print on the side that I had repeating eight times around the kind of main decorative rim of that tanker wagon. Uh, and one of the comments that came up uh, on that video a long time ago now uh, was, wouldn't it be hilarious if I had eight of the Bantha milk ones that came out uh, very recently at that point in 2022 uh, from the 30625 Luke Skywalker with blue milk poly bag. And well, yeah, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, obviously in the films, that is the milk that Luke and the other Jedi wizards used to make uh, the milk chocolate frogs from. Uh, oh, and Ron Solo, of course. Yeah, uh, but basically, uh, I had hoped that coming down in price, uh, but it hasn't and probably never will. So I don't really collect uh, Luke, so it's not that important to me. But getting eight of these uh, would be practically impossible. In fact, if you look at just that piece on uh, Bricklink, then basically you'll see they start at such a price and there's so few of them available as well that it'd be way over £100, I think, just to get eight milks. Uh, so yeah, Bantha Milks is out. And also, quite frankly, that dark azure colour would be very similar to the medium blue of the original. So that is out. But what is the next best thing? Well, it's chocolate milk. So this was also available in only one set. Uh, basically 71016 Quickie Mart, the uh, Simpsons supermarket from 2015. 
uh, where this is rare, but not as rare, partially because that was a, a much more widely available set, much more popular, and because there were seven of these in that set. So getting eight that I needed was not that hard. Well, I say not that hard. I had to go to Norway for them, uh, partially because they had loads of other cool stuff as well. Uh, and it's only now that I'm getting around to using them. Uh, and these are much better value. Uh, quite expensive still, but under a pound each. So uh, yeah, a million miles from the Bantha ones. Anyway, so all I did was the exact same build uh, that I basically did before, putting uh, eight of these wonderful milk cartons around the uh, edge of my build. And I can put the rest of this back together now. Oh, because I don't really need to show you how I built it because it's exactly the same as the one that I did before, apart from the uh, brick there and I just thought this was really quite funny actually because uh, the fact that we've got a milk tanker makes a lot of sense but having a chocolate milk tanker well they just don't exist in real life because they don't pre-mix chocolate milk and then put it into huge amounts of tankers so um, yeah it's kind of quite silly uh, but that's why I like it so I think this is a really good addition and also the reddish brown uh, coupled with the dark brown will go really well next to the medium blue with the blue highlight colour. Uh, and I think the two sort of very similar colour schemes, but completely different colours, uh, will make them uh, really sort of uh, stand off against each other. So I'm looking forward to seeing them side by side. Uh, so there's one thing I did think that I could change. It's just changing these one by two tiles in the reddish brown on the ends for these chocolate bar ones, just because I've got a few of them. Uh, somebody sent some in recently, uh, so I thought I could add them on and just make it a little bit more chocolatey. What do we think of that? I have to do all four, of course. Let's see. I'm up for making it even more obvious, because that is quite subtle that that's uh, chocolate milk. Uh, so let's add two, three. Uh, I'm throwing these things around today. Doesn't help this is on wheels. Three and four get the bows all pointing inwards and there we go what do we think of that so there is our chocolate milk wagon and our sheep wagon ready to go onto the cargo train to make it even longer and even more prone to derailment <laughs> but uh, we'll have to see how small the gap is uh for people to cross i always think on that road crossing that people don't really wait for the lights to sort of uh go on and the barriers to go up they just wait for the end of the train and then quickly dash across before the front of the train <laughs> comes back again uh, given that it just goes round in a loop so yeah i hope you like both of these uh, i haven't got a huge amount of time today and i'm going to have even less time this week to do brand new builds so i thought i'd show you both of these that are very good fun but very quick uh, and we could have a bit of fun seeing them going around the city all right well the new wagons are on the train and I'm showing you them around this corner. <laughs> it's very hard to sort of see, uh, just because I wanted to show how long the train has actually got now. Here is the front, right at the beginning of this turn. And if we follow it round to here, you can see that the pump wagon is just coming off the turn. So I don't know if you'd call that exactly three quarters now, or just very close to it. So. If we did ever want to have this as being a very small gap to uh, complete our loop, then we've got quite a long way to go. So maybe I need to get my uh, thinking hat on in order to uh, make more wagons, yet more. Um, now, I cannot even start this train up from this position, partially because I use infrared and the yellow one is going to be underneath here and not get the signal at the same time. And if all four uh, engines don't get the signal at the same time with the same amount of power and so on then the train will decouple at some point uh, and then half of it will scream around uh, with less load and smash into the back of the rest causing a derailment uh, and that has already happened hooray <laughs> so basically uh, I'm gonna have to sort of wheel this uh, around manually and get it started slowly uh, for the next take with all things getting the same signal because we've got I forget how many motors now but it's about six seven or eight I can't remember uh, and yeah, it's a very del uh, delicately balanced machine. Uh, and if I do add a lot more wagons to make this fourth side complete, then, well, I'm definitely going to need more power and I'm going to need to spread it out yet more. 
uh, around my train, but then with the amount of obstacles I've got, getting them all the same infrared signal at the same time is easier said than done. So yeah, this is not a simple exercise. <laughs> right, here goes. Okay, so here we can see the new wagons a lot more clearly. And I like the fact that they're similar and next to each other, but quite different as well. That chocolate one is quite dark, but uh, you get the idea and it's really good fun. So yeah, I like that. Adds to the length. Can't be too bad, can it? Right, so now I've got the locomotive. So they're out in the open there and out in the open-ish there. Then I should be able to reach them all at the same time with the signal and get this thing rolling. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, you've got to kind of do a gradual addition of power, not get too greedy with the speed as well, because otherwise it will not be happy. And well, listen out at all times, because if you hear a change in pitch of the uh, motors, eh, everyone's favorite, uh, then basically that means it's uh, broken into two trains and one is about to go smashing into the back of the other. <laughs> so here we go. Let's count these wagons and trains when they go around. So one, two, three, four, five, six for the space hopper. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for all the new ones. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty to T-Rex. Twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and to thirty for the uh, boulders. One, two, three, four, and if we're counting the pump wagon, five. So 35 wagons. And if you're at the crossing, then you've really got to time when you go across uh, very wisely in order to not get run over, especially when you consider the passenger train, which we can get running in the opposite direction. Uh, and that is why this terrified person has managed to get stuck halfway in his smart car. So yeah, cool. Right, let's get the uh, other one going. I think we need to turn that one back on. And there we go, the steam one, the flying knotsman. That one we can get going a little bit faster. And there are our new wagons coming up. Sheep <laughs> and chocolate milk. Looking great through the station. Yeah, it's becoming a real engineering marvel, this train now. People have suggested that I split it up into several trains and basically alternate the carriages. Uh, and I just don't think that's so silly, really. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to resist that. But one day we'll have to because it is very impractical for daily use with absolutely everything on. It'd be so much more easy uh, with a shorter number. Uh, but it is very good fun. I think you'll agree. Yes. So, more locomotives needed and more wagons needed. Send your ideas into the comments section and we'll see what we can do in future. But, yeah, it's really nice to see these going around the city, isn't it? And a different noise of the cargo wagon, uh, cargo train with that sort of clump, clump, clump of the space hopper wagon and the ch ch ch, -ch of the... Flying Knotsman, which really does sound like a steam train. I still haven't identified what is making that chug, 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 but it is absolutely perfect. Cool. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, well, I don't know when we're going to have next time because uh, work has decided to conspire against me. Yes, I do have a full-time job on top of all of this hobby. Uh, and, uh, well, it might not be Wednesday, it might not be Friday. I might need a whole week off the channel, to be fair. But anyway... When we get back, it will be time for a brick call. Uh, and then after that, we'll uh, try and maybe get to the fairground or back to the undersea cabinet, which I'm really enjoying right now, I must say. So, uh, yeah. Uh, whenever it is then, see you!